Hello friends, welcome back to Digitalk. In this video, I am going to explain you a very basic activity of FabLogic server. How we can change the admin user password for the FabLogic. So I have got this request from many users, many engineers. Okay, that they were getting a lot of issues when they have changed the password for WebLogic from the admin console. After that, they were not able to start the admin servers or manage servers. Okay, so there is a certain manual activity after the once you reset the admin password from the console. Okay, and depend on whether you are starting the manage servers from the admin console or maybe you starting with the help of scripts. Okay, so there would be a different properties file which WebLogic refer when you start your manage servers okay uh, and based on that you have to do certain manual configurations as well once you will uh, change the password from the admin console okay so i'm going to explain you how to do that and if you are not doing that what kind of errors that you will get after the reset of the passwords so the basic part okay how you can change the password of WebLogic from the admin console Okay, you have to go to security realms because you have all the security informations inside the security realms like users, password, groups, and etc. policies. Okay, once you click on the security realm, then you will see a default security realm with the name My Realm. Click on My Realm and then click on the users and groups tab. Inside that, you can click on users. Okay, it will display all the users that you have in your domain for that particular WebLogic server. Okay, so now in my case, the admin user is the web with the name of WebLogic. Okay, so what I have to do, I have to change the password for my WebLogic user. Okay, this could be a different uh, for your environment. Okay, click on that your username for which you want to change the password. Okay, and once you click on the username, then click on the password tab, and then they have to re you have to enter your new password. Okay, enter it two times. Okay, and then click on save. Right. So once you will click on save, then you are that means your uh, password is changed. Right for your uh, admin user. Right. After that, you have to shut down your servers. Okay. All the complete complete domain, whether you are admin server or manager server, you have to shut down your complete domain. Okay. You you can do it from the console as well. Okay. Click on the servers and then control tab and then select your servers and click on force shutdown. Right. So once your WebLogic server is uh, shut down, your domain is down. After that, okay, just try to start the admin server. Okay. So if you will try, just it will change the password from the admin console and after that you are trying to start the admin server. Okay. With the help of standard script, which is a start weblogic.sh or maybe .pat in Windows, then you will get the exception as shown on the screen, which is a authentication denied boot identity not valid. The username or password or both from the identity file boot or properties is not valid. The boot identity may have not may have been changed since the last boot identity file was created. Please edit and update the boot identity file with the proper values of username and password. So what does it mean? So we have changed the password from the admin console but when we talk about the uh, uh, the admin server when you when you start your admin server it refers the username and password which is exist in a file that is called booter properties and which is in the encrypted form okay and but we have changed the password from the admin console but when you change the password from the admin console it doesn't change the password in the booter properties file for admin server that means we have to manually change the it in the boot or properties file as well the location of boot or properties file is would be inside your domains inside domain you will have a folder with name servers inside server you will have a folder with name admin server go inside that you will see a folder with name security inside security you will have a file called boot or properties okay take a backup of existing file open that file and just enter the uh, plain username and password as i have shown on the screen username equal to your admin username and password equal to whatever the new password that you have given and now start the admin server okay so your admin server will restart and this file contains the encrypted form of username and password so first time when you have given the plain text once you will start your admin server it will automatically get encrypted okay so after restart you will have an encrypted value of the password so that means when you are changing the password from the admin console make sure to change update the boot or properties file for admin server as well okay with the new password and then start the admin server okay and your server will get started now what will be what is the case in case of managed servers okay so try to start your managed servers from the admin console okay and then you will not get any issues your managed server will get start properly okay that means when you are changing the password from the admin console for the admin user you have to update the booter properties file for your uh, admin server okay but for managed server also there is a booter properties file but you don't need to change that one once if you are starting from the admin console and the reason is that when you start the managed server from the admin console it started with the help of node manager right and so if you are starting your uh, node manage uh, managed server from the admin console which is with the help of node manager then there would be a separate node manager security file where no, your node manager store your passwords okay so it will automatically reflected 
uh, the new password is automatically reflected in the node manager security file once you will change the password for admin server and once you will start it for once you will start your admin server okay so that means the node manager security file you don't need to change and that is the reason your managed server will start without any problem so node manager create its own boot dot properties file and store them under each server directory in the data node manager sub directory okay that means inside your domain you will have a folder called servers inside that you will have a folder with the name of managed server inside that you will have, have a folder called data inside data you will have node manager folder and inside the node manager you will have a property file called boot dot properties okay so the location is uh the root directory of your managed server and then data and node manager and this property is referred by your node manager when it is starting your uh, managed server from the admin console and that is the reason you will not get any issues okay now try to start the managed server with the help of a script set in the sense the standard script which is provided by the weblogic uh in your bin directory which is start manage weblogic dot sh for unix based systems and dot cmd for windows the name of your managed server and then your url of your admin server okay and once you will try to start that one and then again it will get failed with the error that the admin server failed to authenticate the identity of the user web logic the admin server could not be reached at the local host colon 8001 and the server is being started in managed server independent mode in the absence of admin server so this is the log that you will see in the managed server okay and what it is saying that that because the username password is get changed and this particular file when you are start your managed server with the help of a script it refers for the different boot properties file of managed server so with because the password is get changed so your managed server is not able to contact your admin server with their old password so that in that case the managed server will be started in the independent mode that is by from the local cache configurations without the contacting the admin server okay that is called the msi mode okay and when you will see the admin server log then it will show you a message invalid user or name or password and attempt was made to download the configuration for the server ms1 by the user web logic with an invalid password okay because the admin server is password got changed but when you are starting the managed server from the script it, it look for a different boot dot properties file and that we have not changed okay and that's why you will get this kind of error so your server managed server may start but you may see the status from the admin console unreachable okay and because here it is starting in the independent mode without contacting the admin server so if you use a script to start managed server rather than admin console then it refer managed server boot dot properties file in domain inside your domain servers managed server name folder security dot properties okay so what we saw in in the previous previous screen is when we start the managed server from the admin console it refer to a boot dot properties file which will be inside your uh, server root folder and data and node manager okay but when we start with the help of a script okay that means when we are starting the managed server with the help of script it refer to a different boot dot properties file which will be inside your uh, managed server root folder inside that you will have a folder called security and boot dot properties okay now again if you wanted to start your managed servers properly with contacting the admin servers okay then you have to change the boot dot properties file which is there inside your managed server security directory as well just like we had started just like we have changed for the admin server and then again try to start your managed server and it will get started okay and this is how we change the admin user password for your admin server and managed servers and how we change the proper boot dot properties file when we are starting with the help of scripts okay so what exactly it is a boot dot properties file it is a file which contain the credentials for starting and stopping the instance in the encrypted form okay and your admin server refer and managed server refer to this file user for the user credentials when you start your uh servers and without prompting you for to entering the username and password that means if you don't have if you are not providing this file you will delete this property file okay then every time you are going to start your managed server or admin server with the help of a script it will prompt you to enter the username and password okay and this there could be a, there can be a different boot identity file for each server that means for each admin server and for each managed server you will have a different boot or properties file okay so when you create the domain in development mode this file get created automatically for your admin server but if you are creating your domain in production mode then for security reasons you have to create this file after creating your domain okay otherwise it will keep prompting you to enter the username and password whenever you are going to start your admin servers okay and if you use node manager to start managed servers rather than using the running starter script manually you do need to create boot dot notice file for them node manager created own boot entity file that means when you are starting the admin managed server from the admin console then you don't need to create this file because boot your node manager will automatically create the boot entity file identity file for you and but if you are starting your managed server with the help of scripts then you have to create this file okay and now how this 
uh, cycle works when we start uh, the server from the uh, admin console okay so suppose that you have admin console and from there you have issued a command to start your managed server ms1 right then ms server will reach to node manager okay because your admin server contact your node manager and then start the server processes so your admin server will contact the node manager okay and there you will have a properties file startup.properties from where it will take the uh, configuration parameters for your managed servers and then it will initiate the process for your managed server and once you will initiate it will initiate the process of managed server then it will first contact the admin server because it's try to sync with the admin server for the configurations okay and after that if if suppose that in case your managed server is not reachable okay then your managed server will start in the managed independent mode but if your admin server is contactable okay it's able to contact your admin server then it will sync all the content from the admin server and then it will replicate in the local cache configuration directory in which it is going to refer right for example if you have maybe you have done certain changes from the admin console and after that you are going to restart your managed servers so when you are restarting your managed server after doing certain kind of a configuration changes then all the changes need to be synced between the all the cache configuration of your managed servers so for that it will contact your admin server and all the configuration will be get sync in the local configuration file so this was the first boot okay and when we talk about the subsequent boot okay or about the restart okay the again we will start the server from the admins with the help of admin server it will contact your node manager and that node manager will obtain the username and properties file right which is that as, as i said inside the data and node manager folder okay after that it will initiate the starting the managed server command it will opt obtain the configurations from your admin server and if admin server as admin server is not reachable managed server will obtain the local cache configurations to start the server this is all about how we can change uh, the password for admin uh, admin user and and if you find this video helpful then stay tuned and i will come back with a few more interesting videos soon